Hello. Today we will be talking about Hanak Shunlain Purpura. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to describe the pathophysiology of Hanak Shunlain Purpura, identify the clinical presentation and diagnostic criteria, and understand the management of Hanak Shunlain Purpura, also known as HSP. HSP is characterized by the inflammation of small blood vessels. Although the etiology of HSP remains unknown, immunoglobulin A immune complexes likely have a critical role in the pathogenesis of this disease. Serum concentrations of IgA have been found to increase in the acute phase. More importantly, deposits of IgA immune complexes have been found in affected vascular tissue, skin, and renal biopsies. It is this deposition that leads to how it presents clinically, which is primarily as a small cell vasculitis complicated by multi-organ manifestation. Since this is an immunologic process, a number of infectious agents have been suspected to be potential triggers of HSP. The fact that HSP rarely occurs in the summer supports an infectious etiology since kids tend to get sick in the colder months. Around 50% of cases are associated with a previous upper respiratory tract infection. Several organisms have been implicated, particularly streptococcus. Vaccinations and insect bites are other potential triggers of HSP. A genetic predisposition to developing HSP has also been suggested. HSP is largely a clinical diagnosis. Therefore, it is important to remember common manifestations of this disease. There are several established criteria for diagnosing HSP. Most recently, a European-based pediatric consensus criteria was established in 2005 and encompasses the key clinical findings one would expect to find in a child with HSP. This consensus criteria is shown here. The most important clinical finding is palpable purpura and the absence of thrombocytopenia. This rash tends to present symmetrically on dependent areas of the body, such as the lower limbs and buttocks. Abdominal pain is another common feature. In particular, we worry about intussusception, which presents as intermittent episodes of severe abdominal pain relieved by the drawing up of the knees. A late sign of intussusception is the passing of current jelly stools. Joints may also be involved in HSP and present as transient or migratory arthritis or arthralgia. The joint pain is oligoarticular and the joint involvement is non-deforming and usually presents on lower joints. Renal involvement, identified by the presence of proteinuria, hematuria, or red blood cell cast, may also be present. The last criterion listed is the only one that is not a clinical finding. Histopathology showing inflammation of the blood vessel or organ tissue with a predominance of IgA can be used to diagnose HSP as well. However, biopsy is typically avoided, especially since we are dealing with the pediatric population. It is indicated only when the purpura has an atypical presentation when HSP is suspected but there is no rash, or when renal disease is severe. While the presence of each of these clinical findings has its own sensitivity and specificity in diagnosing HSP, as shown here, according to the study, the presence of palpable purpura and just one of the other four criteria was found to have 100% sensitivity and 87% specificity in diagnosing HSP. Outside of these more common manifestations, HSP has been reported to affect other organs as well. In boys, the scrotum may be involved, with scrotal pain, tenderness, and swelling being the presenting complaint. Involvement of the central and peripheral nervous system and respiratory tract have also been reported, but these are rare complications. Keratitis and uveitis, however, are rare in HSP. And if these are present, this usually suggests a different diagnosis. As mentioned, HSP is diagnosed clinically. Tests can, however, 
Reveal what triggered the episode of HSP, particularly if it was an infectious cause. And while there is no test that is diagnostic, there are several investigations that can help in assessing the presence and severity of organ involvement. A full blood count can be done. This is important in helping to rule out thrombocytopenia, which is a critical differential for the purpuric rash. Furthermore, the full blood count may reveal the presence of an infection with high photowipe or anemia secondary to a bleeding GI tract. Proper analysis of the renal system is key. Ordering the renal panel, urine distich, protein to creatinine ratio, and urinalysis can help us with this. Urinalysis is particularly important. ESR can also be measured and should be normal or raised. And since streptococcal infections have been suggested as a common triggering event for HSP, an anti streptolysin O titer and anti DNA B can detect a strep infection if it is on board. If abdominal symptoms are present, plain radiographs of the abdomen would be helpful. If interception is a concern, ultrasound instead of contrast enemas should be the initial screening test even though contrast enemas are usually indicated in children presenting with signs of intersusception. This is because over 50% of HSP-related intersusception cases are elio-elio, which is not detectable by contrast enema. Evaluation of the scrotum should be done if scrotal symptoms are present. This helps differentiate HSP as the cause of pain from testicular torsion, which presents very similarly. In HSP, a Doppler flow study will show that testicular blood flow will be normal or increased. As mentioned in the previous slide, skin or renal biopsies can be done, but are usually avoided unless necessary. Little treatment is necessary, since the majority of cases of HSP will be self-limited and resolved in six weeks without further sequelae. However, HSP has been reported to lead to long-term renal impairment and even end-stage renal disease, but this is in a very small percentage of patients. Bed rest and adequate hydration are important first steps. Otherwise, the treatment really varies depending on which organs are involved and to what extent. Pain from arthritis can be managed with NSAIDs. The addition of corticosteroids may help decrease the duration of arthritis symptoms. Corticosteroids can also be given to help with GI-related pain. However, there are no randomized controlled trials to date to validate this use. If more severe GI pathology is present, such as interception or a bleeding GI tract, these should be addressed accordingly. There are limited recommendations concerning the treatment of HSP and nephritis. Of note, previous randomized controlled trials and meta-analyses have shown that the use of prednisolone does not reduce the prevalence of renal disease following HSP. Therefore, corticosteroids are not recommended for this purpose. However, ACE inhibitors have been shown to decrease proteinuria and slow the progression of renal disease in IgA nephropathy. Since IgA nephropathy and HSP nephritis have similar pathogenesis, the use of ACE inhibitors can be considered here. So in summary, HSP is a small cell vasculitis with systemic organ involvement due to the deposition of IgA immune complexes. It is a clinical diagnosis based on the presence of palpable purpura with the possible presence of joint, gastrointestinal, or abdominal symptoms. There are no tests diagnostic for HSP, and treatment largely involves bed rest, hydration, and symptomatic treatment.